See, going to church doesn't get you to heaven. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fish as a man. If you're not fishing for men, you're not following him, you're going to go to hell. It's very cut and dry, right? Yeah, so, you know, we're just here to love on you guys and give you the truth without, without passing an offering play like Mark does. That's all. You know what? We just do what Jesus commands us to do. We leave the effectiveness up to him. Because he's the one that saves, right? right? It's his word. It's a sharp sword. It cuts. It cuts through all the religious crap. Church, churchiosity, right? It does. It cuts right to the heart. If you break the Ten Commandments, you're guilty. Your conscience bears witness. Huh? Yeah. But how about Revelations 18? You know what Jesus said there? He said, come out of her, my people. Touch not the unclean. Be not partakers of her sins, lest you, become, lest you partake of her plague. Jesus is calling the sheep out of the apostate religious system of the day, which is Christianity today. Here you go. Yeah, John 3, 10, John 10, 3 says, my sheep hear my voice, and they, they come out. I leave them out. Christianity is apostate, man. you got to flee it like the plague. It's a harlot. Just like Judaism was. Jesus came to the uh, Church of God there, the Jews, and called his, his uh, sheep out of the Judaism because of the apostasy, right? History repeats. There's nothing new under the sun. Save some, give some uh, people some truth. Because going to church doesn't save. Saying, asking Jesus in your heart doesn't save. What do you know what does? Obedience. Jesus Christ. If you love me, keep my... Can you finish it? Right. What are his commandments? The Bible. From cover to cover, basically, yeah. But more specifically, it's narrowed down into ten. Right. Asking Jesus in your heart isn't in the Bible. Did you know that? Nowhere. Yes. Follow Jesus. Because it's what church you first you represent. We are a church. If Jesus is in you. You are the church. If you're following him, you are the church. You're the called out. You can't go to what you are. Jesus never said, become a Christian. He said, follow me. Do you, uh... How are you doing? One of these? It's, it's the truth. It's, it can't hurt you unless you're living in sin. Because Jesus said, go and sin a little less, right? No? What did he say? He said, go and sin no more. Right. Without holiness, no man shall what? See God. That means you're going to hell if you're not holy. Love, obedience, faithfulness to God first and to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whoever, whoever God draws, he said if we lift his word up, this is all Bible. He will draw those to him who he's calling. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You do not say, go to church. That's not a commandment. Well, I am the church. Of course I believe in it. Church means called out. Apostasy is rampant in Christianity today. It's gone off the rails long ago. And uh, he's calling his sheep out because he's going to judge Christianity. Just like God judged Judaism in 70 AD, he leveled the temple. That's what God thinks about religion. Christianity is just an apostate religion now with Bible words attached to it. It's on the internet. I don't need to go inside. I know exactly what Mark teaches. And he's very confused. Why is that? Because he doesn't follow what Jesus says. Lots of ways. Well, if you knew your Bible, you, could, you would know. Because salvation is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not just choice doctrines that people uh, like and they get their ears tickled by it, right? The, Jesus said the number one sign of his return was, you know what it was? It was the number one sign of his second coming. Deception. He said there should be many false Christs. Many. And Christianity has invented a false Christ. It's a God of love, mercy, all forgiveness. But God hasn't changed. God hates sin. God hates sinners. 
you know? And except we repent, except we repent, which means, do you know what repent means? What's it mean? Right, never go back to it. Right. Mark doesn't teach that. He doesn't. He teaches both. Whatever suits, whatever gets the most money into his pocket, that's what he does. Well, I'm not here to attack him. I'm here to tell you the truth. I love Mark. He needs to repent. He needs to repent because he's leading sheep down the broad way that leads to hell. Well, God will do the work. We're just here to, you know, whoever God wants to bring our way. I used to go, man, I was, I'm a card-carrying Christianity, Bible college, choir, all that stuff, man. I did it all. But it was false because it, they don't, Christians don't fear God. There's no fear of God before their eyes. And the beginning of wisdom and knowledge is what? The love of God? What is it? No, it's the fear of God. Not very many. Jesus said, when, I, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? All the light that I know that I have, I have a clean conscience for God. It sounds, I mean, one thing that I appreciate about this place. Yeah. No, we just love you guys. We just want you to know that there's deception rampant in, in Christianity. And you need to follow Jesus in the Word of God, not what a man says. Do you know about 98% of professing evangelicals are not saved? You know why? Yeah, 98% of Christians are not saved. You know why? Because only 2% share their faith with the, with the lost. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father and the angels. If you're not actively witnessing and sharing the gospel, you're not even saved yourself. Whoever is not with me is against me. No. And whoever does not gather with me is scattered. Church? This is not a church, man. Oh, fellowship, that's what you meant, right? Fellowship of what? What kind of people? They came together not to listen to a pastor, and you have no, no word pastor in the, in the book of Acts at all. Okay. Save yourself, see through the faith. 
What is the faith? It's not going to church and sitting on a pew. No, faith is being obedient, being a disciple of Christ. Walk as you are. Be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Not to be loved by the world. Folks, what saved, always saved is a lie. Look at the Israelites. They were in Egypt, and they were cut off. They were saved. God saved them from Egypt, and then they were cut off because of their unbelief. You know, the prophecy you love your ears to be tickled. And that's why you come here. Tickling your ears is what you want, folks. And that's not what God wants from you. God wants you to obey Him. Pick up your Bible and see. Where do you see the word pastor in the Bible? Never. There is five-fold ministry. Not a pastor. You never see a pastor in the book of Acts. Show me. Never. Why do you come and sit to listen to a pastor? That doesn't exist, folks. It does not. You go to the church. Christ never said, go to church. No, he said, pick up yourself. Pick up your own authority. Deny yourself. That's what he said. He never said, don't go to church. Listen to your pastor. No, never. You need to read your Bible. See what the Bible says, folks. I hear, I'm here because I care for you. You are being deceived. You are being deceived. The traditions of man have made a no one fail the word of God. There's no power. Where's the power? Can you guys heal the sick? Can you? Do you guys know the authority that Christ has given you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? Do you know that? Where's it at, folks? We're just here to entertain ourselves, listen to some good rock and roll music, you know, and entertain ourselves. This is what the Bible says. Find me in the Bible. If any of you or your pastor can bring me out here the word pastor in the church, a pastor taking over a congregation, where is it in the church, in the, in the Bible? In the book of Acts, find me once. But you know what the Bible says about a pastor ruling over a church? It's called Nicolaitans. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you heard about it, right? God gave the works of the Nicolaitans. That's what it is. They're ruling over the land. Yeah, they're ruling over the people. Folks, you're deceived. Show me the book of Acts where it says, go and listen to your pastor. Sit in a, in a pew and listen to your pastor. Give him money. Where's it at? Show me in your Bible. I'll even read from your Bible. Show it to me, man. Show it to me. Where's the say their pastor? You folks are deceived. You've been lied to. You've been lied to. You don't know the Bible. Where's the Bible? It says you have a worship band. Where's it at? Where's it at? Book of Acts. Book of Acts. There's the history of the church right there. Book of Acts. Show me. Worship band and a pastor. Assistant pastor. Sunday school pastor. Let me know. Let me know. Men in youth ministry. Where's it at? I never seen that. You know what's happening? You'll be persecuted. You know why? Because they were exposing the darkness that was in the world. They're exposing the darkness that was in the church. Judaism. Yes. That's what happened. Christ came for them. That was his. And they received him not. They received him not. You know why, folks? You're not receiving Jesus. You're not receiving Jesus. He's coming for you. You're not receiving him. He said, Come out of her, my people. My people. Time sitting on a pew. Don't be a pew over. Be a disciple of Christ. What is the Bible? Sit on the pew. We got to get in houses, not in temples, in houses. Oh, you sure? Are you sure? How did Christ preach to 5,000 people? Yes. How did Peter preach to 2,000 or 5,000 people? How can you preach if you're not screaming? Lift up your voice. Preaching means lift up your voice. That's what it means. Lift up your voice, folks. You know, you know why you folks don't go out and stand out for righteousness? Because you're embarrassed of Jesus. Because you're embarrassed of Jesus.